there is something wrong with the way we are treating the planet. And politicians have been saying they're doing something about it and they're, they're demonstrably not. We need to recognise that we are in trouble. I'm a medical doctor. I'm a GP working in Hackney in London. I'm a kidney consultant from the northeast of uh, England. I'm a doctor involved with Extinction Rebellion. It's been difficult to ignore the warning signs that we're, we're being issued with. Impacts that we're seeing in climate are, you know, have really wide and far-reaching health consequences. It's, it's almost hard to break down. The links between climate change and health are across the board. You, know, you walk around on a sunny day in England and it all looks fine and you think it's all fine but we have 40,000 people dying already every year as a result of our poor air pollution. Air pollution and climate change uh, go hand in hand. Air pollution from fossil fuel burning. I see patients coming in with exacerbations of asthma and respiratory illnesses. Air pollution is as damaging in terms of risk of early miscarriage as smoking is which is really frightening. And that starts right in the womb. Those, those tiny particles get into our bloodstream, they cross into the placenta, they cross into our brains. A lot of well-studied links between climate change, um, particularly extreme heat events and heart disease, cardiovascular disease, heart attacks. Um, heart failure. We know that heat waves can be deadly. The, the 2003 heat wave in Europe killed 70,000 people. Coupled with uh, you know, those uh, winter related deaths, we're also going to be seeing uh, a spike in summer deaths as well. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to have an impact on the, on the whole NHS. What's needed is uh, an embedding, a complete sea change in the way that we approach our relationship with planetary resources. So we use electric cars, we've got solar panels. I've decided to fly less, I've decided to eat less meat and dairy. I can you know, switch my diet, I can reduce my driving, um, you know, I can fly a lot, lot less than I used to, um, but that's not easy for everybody. I got involved with Extinction Rebellion when I realised that individual actions weren't enough doing things like getting a bamboo toothbrush or cycling or recycling and feeling relatively good about myself. But then I realised that these things are complete nonsense when we live in a system um, which is systematically killing us through use of fossil fuels. The UK is one of the biggest subsidisers of the fossil fuel industry. £10.5 billion pounds worth of taxpayers' money. I must act if there's any risk to the safety of my patients. In the last year I've been arrested twice because I can't look my children in the eye if I step back. There's still no question in my head that I would do it again. Because I will do it again and I'll do it again until we start to take this seriously. I've seriously considered arrest myself. If that's what it takes, I would do it in a minute. Current um, strategy of the government is pushing us in completely the wrong direction. Unbelievably, this year they've greenlighted a new coal mine. We're still talking about expanding Heathrow Airport. Many people don't know this, but actually built into the Infrastructure Act in 2015 is a legal obligation to maximise um, extraction of UK petroleum. Inaction that we've seen by our governments on this issue has been really criminal. So I have a six-year-old son and it really makes me scared. You know, you meet a parent who doesn't say that they would they would do anything in the world for their child. I'm terrified of what the future holds for her. As a doctor, my one message to the government would be you have a duty to protect the people who elected you. Currently what you're giving us is words. We need action. If we can pull that out of the bag to fight an evil regime, surely we can pull it out of the bag to protect the whole of the planet. I will keep protesting until I see that kind of response coming from you. We're not talking about the end of the century. We're talking now. Those heat waves are going to get worse. Uh, those heat waves are potentially going to cause crop failures. I guess I also have a lot of hope. We can act and we can change things and we can create a much more positive future. But the problem is not going to go away. So we have two choices. We do nothing or we act now. It's as simple as that.